Now to the continuing fallout from the college cheating scandal known as Operation Varsity Blues. Former Stanford University sailing coach John Vandemore was the first defendant to be sentenced in the scandal that's ensnared dozens of wealthy families, including Full House actress Lori Loughlin and her husband and actress Felicity Huffman. Vandemore documents his experiences in his new book, Rigged Justice, how the college admissions scandal ruined an innocent man's life. John joins us now. Uh, John, thanks for being here with us tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, so you pleaded guilty to one count of racketeering conspiracy for accepting bribes from alleged mastermind Rick Singer in exchange for designating Stanford applicants as official sailing recruits, but you maintain that you're not guilty. So why did you enter that plea? Well, I really entered the plea because it was the best decision for my family. Um, winning for me, if I stayed and fought it, would be spending millions of dollars on lawyer fees, um, waiting for over a year with COVID, it have been well over a year to even defend myself. And at that point, my career was already going to be over. So the quickest way for me to kind of move forward was to plea. The judge called you, and we should point this out, the least culpable defendant in the case because the half a million dollars that you accepted from Singer went directly to Stanford's sailing program and not into your own pocket. So is that a key point for you? And do you think this, you know, the lack of personal enrichment here in some way excuses your role in the scheme? I really think it's a key part of it. Um, and there's two key parts. One is that I didn't accept any money at all. All of it went to Stanford University, written to Stanford University, handed to their development officers. But the other part of it is that no student even applied to Stanford. Uh, so the admissions office didn't even have to read a single application in this. So let's talk about that for a minute, because I think a lot of people followed this entire story from beginning to even now as trials are going on, certainly uh, your personal story. And a lot of people are thinking, well, he accepted a plea, and we know people who are not guilty accept pleas all the time. Uh, but there were no red flags that went up for you, even though this money wasn't going into your pocket. There were hundreds of thousands of dollars coming in and going to the school. Did you think that was just normal? I really did. Um, we've had incredible generous donator, donor, donors for Stanford in the past, and I thought this was just part of it. Um, I was really relying on the school to help me, educate me, um, and protect me in this, um, but I was wrong. And it, yeah, in the book, you make that clear. You feel betrayed by the school. How so? I do, because their lack of education, and, and by their own admittance um, in their press releases, that they could have done more to educate uh, coaches like myself to help with this, and, and they just didn't do it. All right, so let's go back a few years. Uh, you describe in the book being in your pajamas, opening the door, finding an FBI, an IRS agent on your doorstep. And in the following months, your life just came crashing down in a very, very public way. What were some of the worst moments for you? Well, two very scary moments is one opening that door in the first place and seeing two agents stay outside my door and not knowing what it was about at all. And then really finding out later that I was the, you know, I was the person they were looking for, um, that I was the person that they were um, trying to get into this and trying to charge. And that was that was incredibly tough. Um, I mean, I dropped to my knees and started crying the, the second I even heard that. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in reading the account of someone who was involved in this, but why did you choose to publish your book right now when there are still trials pending in other huge cases? Well, it actually wasn't planned that way. Um, COVID kind of made everything delayed, uh, the trials and my book, um, but it came out at the same time. Uh, you know, and I think it's even better for it. You know, I wrote this book for my for my children, for my family, um, for my friends to hear my story. But I also wrote it as a warning for uh, my colleagues, um, for anybody that can be caught up with a large corporation like this. And I think it's good timing to, to take recognition of this. John, two quick final questions for you. First, what lessons have you learned from all this? And uh, what are you doing now? Will you ever coach at the collegiate level again? Yeah, I learned a lot from this, but I think the biggest thing, biggest takeaway for me is perspective. Um, 
really looking at what's being offered and handed to me and surrounding myself with people that I can really trust and that are loyal to me and I'm loyal to them. Uh, it's really about community. I think we all learned that at COVID and it certainly is prevalent for me. Um, for me now, I'm coaching kids. I coach a group of 10 to 13 year olds and I really like that. I really love it. Um, and I've kind of moved on careers that I'm working as an engineer now for a, a water, potable water company. And I really like that as well. I've got great colleagues and I'm enjoying my community. And finally, we all know it's kind of hard to unring a bell. You took a plea. Your name was, you know, all over this scandal. You know, no, certainly not, you know, like Lori Laughlin's and, you know, people who are famous like that. But certainly people know your name because of this. Um, do you think there will be a time where everybody, anybody looks at you and says, oh, that was the guy who was involved in that. He took a plea. He's obviously guilty. Now, you say you're not guilty. You took the plea. Do you think that stays with you, that label stays with you for the rest of your life? It does. I mean, there, there's no way around it. I mean, if you look on Wikipedia or anything else about the case, my name is listed there with everybody else. But that's not really what I'm concerned with. I, I really wanted to tell my story out there. So my family, the people that know me, my friends, more importantly, my kids, I have a five and three year old. They can hear my story from my words, and that's really what matters. All right, and there it is. Uh, John Vandemore, thank you so much. Rig Justice, How the College Admissions Scandal Ruined an Innocent Man's Life, is available wherever books are sold. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.